Good afternoon traders and welcome to the weekly market analysis this week starting Monday the 30th of January. Before we do get started as always please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay so let me recap have a bit of a look at what's happened this week and uh, what's uh, about to happen in the, the, the week moving forward and essentially uh, we'll start off with the US side um, pretty much we've just come off the first week of uh, the Trump presidency and we got to see a little bit of a taste of how committed he is to the promises he made during his campaign um, the economic growth uh, in the last quarter, quarter four has seems to have slowed down a little bit um, but there are, there is hope ahead with some signs in housing and uh, investment that the economy is due for a rebound in the coming months um, so that's what sort of uh, where we are. Um, although m many countries have market moving events uh, on their calendars uh, this week, the US dollar I think is going to remain the center of the focus and for the most part of it dictate the general trend of the currency. So this is the first week of the month. It's generally the heaviest in terms of data. Of course we have non-farm payrolls. I'll show you in a moment everything that's due to come out. Um, there are Although there are there's still some more executive orders that are that are due to be announced uh, from from the Fed, but really everything's going to be driven by the Fed Reserve's monetary policy and of course non-farm payroll numbers. Um, I think most investors are going to be looking very very close uh, to see what the Fed says uh, and specifically to see how committed they are to actually going ahead with their, what they've already spoken about for quite some time which is that they intend to raise rates three times uh, during this year. So that's going to be the key. Let me show you what's on the agenda so that everybody can just start to digest some of it. I've only highlighted the actually most important uh, um, events that are due. Um, so that's for the US and if I point them out for you right down the bottom here where I'm putting my little arrow this is non-farm payroll so this is this will happen Friday 12.30 midnight after after midnight for us this is the the major uh, chunk of US data and of course on Thursday over here which is all uh, USD okay so this is the the outlook for the US dollar if I move along let's focus a little bit on the sterling for a moment uh, in the week that just went by, um, we we of course spoke about last week that uh, Prime Minister May was a speech which w she was going to announce the plan for a hard Brexit strategy and essentially the, the sterling was one of the better uh, moving currencies with about a 600 pip recovery. Um, in the coming week ahead, Thursday is a huge, huge day for the sterling and that's when the Bank of England will meet also release their quarterly inflation report and of course the Governor Carney has a speech. Now the markets seem to think that there is a 50% chance of a rate hike by the end of the year. Okay, I don't think anybody thinks something's going to happen uh, this uh, time round but that's what they're saying. Now of course I'm talking about all this bit of data here uh, on Thursday which will be happening uh, around about 11 p.m. my local time. So that's for the sterling. Moving along to the euro, the focus has started to turn back on Greece again as they have uh, three weeks essentially to break deadlock in talks with their creditors um, or they start to risk the country's debt crisis to resurface again. Uh, for the Euro this week where a couple of the highlights are over here, Mr Draghi speaking and what specifically what we're looking for um, is any reference to the to of course the Greece situation but also to the monetary policy easing program. There's another one over here, Mr Draghi will be speaking at those times. Finally getting over to our local currency 
in the week that's just gone by. Essentially the price growth numbers are surprised uh, in Australia and they did miss expectations whilst in New Zealand they exceeded theirs. So we, we had a quite a almost a bit of divergence between the Aussie and the New Zealand and the Aussie Kiwi pair reacted uh, accordingly on that bit of data. Now for the Aussie typically it's the first Tuesday where am I looking for the second Tuesday of the month and uh, so no it's not this week at all sorry I can't see that there alright so these are the highlights I think purely because of the nature of the beast and what we're in the U any US pair is going to be highly volatile and particularly this week it's going to be the US sorry the GBP wrote this back to front the GBP USD um, as we have significant amounts of data being released uh, by these two uh, nations. Okay, so there you are. Of course, these times are in my local uh, time, which is Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Times. Please take note if there's any currency that you're trading and you get caught up in a news announcement. These are the most highly volatile ones that I've highlighted for us, and of course, uh, I will track these throughout the week with the daily call that I have been producing for us every morning. Alright, time to bring my charts forward. Give me one moment and let's have a look at what is happening. By the way, in Sydney I am absolutely melting here. It's very difficult just to concentrate. Um, but let's see how we go. Start off Aussie dollar. Okay, what do we have on Aussie dollar? Give me one moment. Okay, Aussie dollar, we remember last week we were speaking, see if we can get the pull back in, let's get the action and shoot off into this direction. Now, we do have the pullback. Now, if the current candle remains inside this parameter there, we will get an inside candle over here. Now, please note, even though this current candle here is the low, if the current one ends up being an inside candle, we will not get a fractal on this candle. A fractal looks at a five candle sequence and because this one here is lower than that one, essentially it's gone up and down again, so that's why we will not get it. However, it's still tradable, okay? So if we happen to get an inside candle out of this one, let's say this is what the candle looks like by tomorrow morning, then straight away we can uh, look for the break and we're set to go. So this one, put this one on your highlight list, it will be ready tomorrow if in fact it does set up. So the other point of interest that, that I that I take note here, usually the first week of the month because we have non-farm payrolls, we the US dollar will do something. It's very rare that we have non-farm payroll and the US dollar does is flat. Okay, so the Aussie, all the pairs against the US dollar will, will react accordingly to that news. So it could either, what's going to happen is either we're going to shoot straight down or shoot straight up. And like I said, it's very rare that we, we have a, a non-event data release from non-farm payroll. If anything, even the, the euphoria of the news because it's so anticipated and watched by so many investors and traders will make it a move. Okay, so I'm trying to see if I can find an excuse to be a seller on this. Now I'd, I'll note that from here to here uh, and extending up to here, this is my 127 Fibonacci level, but I don't have any kind of price action there to justify a sell into this position. Now why would I be looking for a sell? Can anybody help me? If I'm, from what I've just said on the fundamentals with the US, why would I be looking for a sell? Anybody have any ideas? Essentially the reason that I'm looking for a sell is because I'm the fundamentals are pointing towards possibly strong US data. Okay, so strong US data would basically mean the Aussie dollar goes up or down. Thinking caps on guys, strong US dollar, what happens to the Aussie US pair? Up or down? 
Thank you. All right, everybody who's answered has answered correctly. It will go down, okay? So I'm trying to look for a sell situation, but I can't. I don't have one, okay? So I'm going to sit this one out. So, which leads me to a very important point, which I always talk about in the side when I talk about psychology of trading. If all of a sudden now I see a setup in the other direction, in this direction, and just because my fundamentals or I have a, an opinion, a fundamental based opinion that it's going to go in the other direction, I still will always trade what I see. Okay? So if you're having this mental confusion in your own head, you need to work that out and, and include the decision of uh, or that those types of scenarios into your trading plans so that when they do arise, you don't actually have a, a problem with taking the trade. Uh, Stan's asking me a counter trend line break. No, the counter trend is if I do, the only reason I can I can find the counter trend, let me have a look. See, I'm not really in a region, so if I was going to say this region here, it's not really relating on the left-hand side. I don't think we're really anywhere there. The The reason that I'll that I could possibly find a counter trend trade is if I grab a Fibonacci extension and as you can see I've taken it from that point down to here extend it out and I'm very close to that 127 level it's the only reason that I've got to try and be a seller but I still can't find one okay so all I'm trying to point out is I'm trying to point out to you that sometimes you're gonna have a bias towards wanting to find the trade into one direction so you'll look for it but don't create trades that don't exist. Okay, so I look for it, but there's nothing there, so I walk away for it. Instead, if this one sets up for tomorrow, I'm happy and I'm going to trade the other direction. Okay, I've made my point. Let's move on. Euro USD. Okay, Euro USD. We actually have a triggered trade here. Did anybody watch the daily call already this morning? Can I can I get a, a show of hands if somebody did? Okay, this is the trade that I found, and this is a perfect example, like if we get strong US data, you know, it's not going to help this trade at all. But that doesn't happen till Friday, okay? So I've still got three solid days that this trade could just play out already. Now the trade that I'm looking at, let's zoom in a little bit better, and by our definition, my moving averages have crossed over there, so from this point onwards, technically, I'm in an uptrend. Okay, so if I'm in an uptrend, now I'm going to try and trade inside that trend. Here comes the market. It's come back. It's pulled down. It's There's my fractal candle, and now will it kick along? That's what we're trying to trade. If I concentrate on these two candles right here, we have a, a classic setup. It doesn't get more textbook than that. Nice inside candle. There's my fractal. Basically, at the break of that candle, you're in to trade. I'm going to take this one live right now. Um, I've, I'm already in this trade in another account, but this Monday account I am not, so I'm just going to enter right now. Uh, the reason I'm entering is you can see that it's already broken, and I'm probably going to get in at a slightly worse price. How far? It's only like five pips worse off, probably about three pips actually worse off. So I'm just going to take it right now. Let me just size up. Give me one second. I want an 80 pip stop. And I'll take a $250 risk on it. So $250 divided by 80. That's $3.12 per pip. Convert to Aussie. So I'm going to trade at $2.34. A pip. What volume size? Two dollars thirty-four. What's my volume size, guys? Thinking cap. While I set up my ticket, two dollars thirty-four. What is my volume size? No one knows. Oh, it's too hot to think today. Thank you, James. It's two. It's zero point two three. Okay. So, and my stop. One oh six fifty. 
and I'll just put an arbitrary profit and I'll adjust it in one moment. Okay, I'm a buyer, here we go, live. And we're in. Okay, so you can see on my chart the little green line right there. There's my stop exactly where I wanted it. Let me just make an adjustment. So that's about, let me just measure. I want to go, I think I'm about the right spot. Yep, I'm pretty happy there. That's very close to 2 to 1. Of course, uh, for anybody new, so what, I'm, what I mean by that is I'm risking here X amount. Okay, in my case, I've, I've sized the trade so that it's 250. And this distance here, which is my target, is 2X. So I'm risking 1X to possibly make two of them. Now, also, this is like my my one-to-one -one point okay so I like that my one-to-one -one point is well below that level there so I may move my stop up you take action as per whatever your trading plans says okay so there you have it we are long we just bought euro USD and you can see the trade over here, just for anybody that's not sure. 0 0.23 is my size. I've, that's my entry point, my stop, and my target right there. Okay. All right. Let's carry on. GBP USD. Okay, I'm just going to put a marker on this level here. And let me show you why I've just done that. When I bring it across, it's it's not perfect, but it's it's kind of in this vicinity. This was this acted as a floor before, as support. It's broken through and it's rejected once. And I'm kind of keen to see what happens over here. Okay, so this is definitely. The market does not like this region. It will kick back or it will break through. All right. So over here, there will be a really good trading opportunity. So let's keep an eye on this one. Okay. So let me zoom in and see if I can see something for us right now. Okay. There's nothing there. But what could happen is as follows. We could get a candle that does this and then tomorrow we could get another one here like this your fractal will be here and then you would have an inside candle if your trigger is there and you're aiming and this distance here is still enough that this distance here is your stop that it works out to be at least two to one or there or thereabouts then by all means don't be afraid of taking that trade because there's still room before you get into this region that we've marked out. Does everybody understand what I've just tried to describe? If anybody's lost, can you just give me a question mark? Um, I, I've been doing this for a long, long time, and sometimes I, I may skip some things, so I just want to make sure that I don't lose anybody. Okay. So what I'm saying is, if we get the pullback and we get an inside candle set up, all right, what I'm trying to say is if, we, if a trade does set up to become a buyer, as long as I've got enough room to get to my targets, then don't be afraid of taking that type of trade. Okay? So, because what we what could happen is we could get one nice trade that takes us up here. Once we get there, the first trade finishes out, and we could get a second trade to take us all the way back down. And that's like a perfect scenario. All right, so let's mark this area on our charts and keep them there. This is a definitely uh, a very nice hot spot for us. Okay? Let's move along. US yen. Okay, the US yen is an interesting one. Oh, there is one thing that I didn't point out. Give me one second. Let me just go back because it's just come to my head right now. We do have uh, big, big data for the yen tomorrow. Okay, so whenever the Bank of Japan talks about their monetary policy statement 
always please take up, take uh, sit up and take notice because they can actually probably it's one of the currencies that can move the market the most with their monetary policy statements. They're renowned for it to just all of a sudden come in and just announce like a unexpected bombshell. So and. The unfortunate part is, is they don't give us a time. It's tentative, so we don't know if it's going to happen. At, but just remember that Japan turns up to work at about 11 a.m. Uh, our time or midday thereabouts. So you expect it anywhere between midday to 4 p.m. All right, I would expect it in their morning. So uh, look, they could give us a bit of a non-event, but also they're ones that can actually make the market really rattle and roll as they say okay so let me go back to my chart now with that in mind let's see if we can uh, see something I've got this level marked out let me see why okay I can see why because it's been sub uh, support then it's been resistance and it, we have not we were looking to see if we could get there but we did not reach it so we um, Look at the moment, the the US yen is in transition, so I would say there's there's nothing for us. If anything, we could possibly try and get a ch sneaky cheeky trade in there on a four hour chart. Let me see. Ah, uh, it's all we've missed it. Okay. See there. Look. Oops. Let me change colours. Inside candle, triple inside candle, and then bang. All right. So we've missed it. Not to worry. Let me get rid of that now. Actually, I'll leave it in there just to remind me. Uh, I don't want to touch this one until we get out of this the region or we come back into here. And over here, I'm really interested in it again. All right. So that's the US yen. Let's move along. Euro yen. Okay. Look at these... Um, couple of setups here which don't they don't look traditional okay but they they would be considered still trend see we're in trend the first one happens you know like this is a body engulfing type setup all right now it did go negative for a bit but the trade is positive if you didn't get that one definitely there was another one over here I don't know if we traded this one or not um, and it's moving along as well right now where we sit where we sit right now, we really need to get over that level or we need to get under that level. So until I leave this region, I really, I'm really i not interested in taking trades on the Euro Yen. Okay, so uh, well, I could be interested in a trade up here actually, but this would be I could be interested in price action there, trading in this direction as well. So let me leave that mark, and let's see what happens. All right. So, did, is, did anybody pick up a T chaser or something around about here on this? Did anybody? Do we have any T chase traders in the room right now? If you if you are, can you just let yourself be known? So I'm sure there might have been a setup around about here, possibly here somewhere. I can see it here. Alan is. Are you? Did you take this one, Alan? Because this is the beauty of the T chaser. When you hit a trend, you can really, really get some really good momentum. Oh, so you just recently got stopped out. Okay, so you would have, but you would have made a profit on that trade for sure. Okay, so right now Euro Yen. Uh, let's let's just wait and sit it out and see what happens okay Kiwi dollar okay here's another trade I'm going to take this one I'm going to show explain it to you actually let's talk about it give me one moment if anybody's been watching the daily trade uh, sorry the, the daily call I think I called this one out on Friday okay this is a very nice triple touch very clear I don't think anyone everyone can see you got one two and three 
three nice touches. Let me zoom in now. As I zoom in, I think it was Friday's daily call, or might have been Thursday's, I don't remember. I think it was Thursday's, because this is Friday. Yeah, Thursday. Or anyway, it doesn't matter. Look at these two candles. Okay, this is when I put the, the call out, and essentially it's uh, this candle here, the one I'm pointing at, is engulfing this one over here. So the way that you trade this, as soon as this candle starts, you jump on it straight away. Now, I'm already on this trade in another account, um, and I'm down about, well, not, not too much, and what am I down about? 28 pips on the trade, okay? So, if anybody was going to take this trade based on the engulfing reason, you can jump in live at market right now, and you're actually getting an entry 28 pips better than had you taken it on Friday. If you're very conservative and you're still not sure, if you notice, it's actually now produced for us an inside candle. These, if, we, if we look at these two candles now, the green one, this one here, is completely inside of the red one. Can everybody see that? That it's now an inside candle? So if you're a little bit more conservative and your trading plan says that you don't trade the engulfing setup but you trade the inside setup, well then you can actually place your pending order to break here and if it does break, well then you're in. So can you see why the engulfing is more aggressive than the inside? First of all, the engulfing had this candle, this one here that I'm pointing at, just shot straight up this fractal would not be there and then you would be looking at your trade thinking why did I take this trade there's no reason to be in a trade okay so that's one of the reasons and the second reason now is well if you wait for the inside if this clips the top there well then it's not valid and then you can cancel out okay does everybody understand what I've explained so I'm, I'm jumping in at market so here I go, let me measure out, and remember what I spoke about the, 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 the US dollar? If we do get strong US dollar data, does this trade that I'm about to take right now support that, or it goes against it? Does it support strong data, or does it go against it? What do we think? Everybody um, just put an S for support, or A for against. If you don't know, type in a question mark. I'm just keen because this tells me w what we're thinking. Okay, I've actually got a 50-50, no, I've got about 70% people saying one way, a couple of people don't know. Alright, let me explain it. I'll do a quick explanation. We have a pair, New Zealand, USD. If we get strong US data, so strong on this side, this currency becomes stronger against this one, okay? Because the pair is expressed as Kiwi USD, so if we get strong data here, if we get pluses over here, what will happen is this will drop, okay? It will drop. There's actually four ways a currency can move. This is one way. The second way is if this if this currency, if this gets positive there, positive news, then this one will go in that direction. And then you can get, they can both be, get positive news, but one gets it a little bit stronger than the other here, and it still can go up, and vice versa. Okay, so there's four different combinations that, that can possibly happen. Alright, but if we do get strong US data, the Kiwi dollar should drop. That's that's the, the logic behind it, which supports what I wanted to do before, so I'm happy to take this trade right now. And also notice that I'm long Euro USD, so am I a little bit hedged by being a buyer on the Euro and a seller on the Kiwi? Am I hedged or not? What do we think while I size this up? Have a think about it. 
Okay, my stop's going to be... I'm going to make it... 57. So $250 divided by 57 pips. $4.30. Okay, convert to Aussie. $3.28. Okay, let me get my ticket up. $3.28. 0 0.3. Oops, 3. Two. Okay. Yes, everybody got the answer right. So I'm a little bit hedged, which is which actually gives me a little bit of protection. Okay. So seventy-three fifteen or seventy-three twenty. Let's make it. There we go. I'll just put an arbitrary target. I'll fix it in a moment. Seventy-one, and I'm a seller. Here we go. I'm live. I'm in the market. You can see there's my entry right there. That's my stop. This is my target. Let me just measure to see if that target is at about 2 to 1. Just got to make a little adjustment. Okay, there you go. So I've just sold Kiwi Dollar, and you can see it. I've sold 0 0.32, which is a $250 risk, the same risk as the other one. Uh, I'm just going in the other direction. All right. So these two trades do have some amount of hedging. It's not 100%, but there is a little bit of hedging involved in that. So I'm very very happy about that situation. Questions being asked. This pair is also a great tea chaser as well. Oh yes, you probably caught it about here. This candle here, I'm guessing, or this one here. One of those two. Ah, someone asked a great question here. This is the first time anybody's asked that. Oh, this is this my answer is gonna confuse a lot of people. I will try my best. I know what I'm talking about, but I'll try. You can see here I'm long Euro USD and I'm short New Zealand USD. Effectively, it's like I'm trading the Euro New Zealand. That's effectively what's happening. Okay, so at the, uh, so to answer the question, if the the Euro New Zealand goes up what you'll notice is both of my trades will go good. If this one goes down, both of my trades will go a little bit off. Okay, But there is a, a good deal of hedging. This is a very, very complex method. Um, I only teach like correlation cross-pair trading to my advanced students. I don't want to talk about it right now because I'm going to confuse a lot of people. Um, just all you need to understand is that I do have a, an amount of hedging involved right now and, and it's actually protecting me. Okay, because I'm going, it's almost like I'm going in both directions. But thank you for the question, Stan. If you do have any more questions on that, feel free to email me personally. Okay, all right, US CAD. Let me see. <coughs> Oops, US CAD's been a. I just lost the US CAD. <coughs> US CAD's been a really good currency of late, it's just been giving us some really good, um, nice movements just looking to try and catch a couple of trades but it's just it hasn't really allowed us to to grab a really really good trade and again it, I'm kind of like on a floor over here but there's nothing here okay I have to sit this one out I let me have a look on a four hour chart no there's nothing here. So uh, US CAD, look, let's just wait it out. It's it's swinging around nicely, which is which is something that we that I personally like to see in currencies, okay? Uh, but it's not giving me an entry point. All right, I'll move along. Okay, is anybody long Aussie 200? I spoke last week about a pullback. and a setup to be a buyer. 
Anybody long? Okay, Alan's long. Good. Um, basically, look look at the setup, guys. It's a uh, inner trend. It's pulled back. We've got the inside candle, and then it's broken to the upside. So if you buy right now, if we buy right now, we're in at almost almost the same the same level that we would have had. Uh, we're actually getting it a little bit cheaper than normal. Now I can't get in right now because anybody know why I can't get in right now? The market's in this 30-minute pause right now. It's um, I can't trade the Aussie 200 be between 4 o'clock and 4:15 or something like that. I, let me see. Is that right? Yeah, I gotta wait. I just gotta wait. Okay, so. As soon as I finish this class, if anybody's interested, you can. There's a trade here on the Aussie 200 right now as well. All right. So and it's a trend-based trade, pullback, inside candle, continuation. Okay. So if anybody's interested in that, it's there, ready to go. I'll move along to the final one for the week. Oil. Let's have a look. Oil, oil, oil. Still zigzagging. Still in that range. Okay, we won't do anything with oil until really until I leave this area. I, I'm not interested. Alternatively, you can look for the trades on the edges, and feel free to drop into like a four-hour chart to find those trades. But right now we're right in the center of it, so it basically means that uh, there's no action. There's, I'm, I'm not going to do anything on on this one today. All right, let me, anybody have any questions? They can be off topic. Anything you like, please type them in. Let me go back and review, see what we've done, and I'll summarize for today. So Aussie USD, we watch this candle. Tomorrow morning, we could have a setup inside bar as a trend continuation uh, type trade. Okay, so look out for that one. Euro USD, we've, we've done something on it. We've already, we've, we're buyers. We've gone along on trend trade pulled back we got the price action and now we're shooting for further gains GBP USD we've highlighted this top region and we're going to also monitor any pullbacks if we do get an opportunity to trade towards it but the one that I'm more interested in is when when we get there to look for the trade in the downward direction. So GBP USD could give us two potential trades, so look out for that. US Yen, we're still ranging, so we need to leave the range before we get interested in it. Uh, Euro Yen, again, we I, I will look for something when we get to here, and then I to possibly see if I can sell into the Euro Yen. Kiwi Dollar, we have taken a sell, so we are short Kiwi Dollar right now. Um, the reason is we have a triple touch and we had an engulfing setup. For anybody that's a bit more conservative, you may wait for the inside candle break and um, to see if you get triggered into the trade. All right, US CAD was nothing. Aussie 200, there is a trade there for anybody that wants it. I just got to wait till the session opens up again so that I can actually take the trade. Finally, oil, nothing happening on oil, and that wraps up this week. Let me bring forward again uh, the, the news, events that are happening this week so that you can uh, take note. It's a very, very filled week in terms of news, the highlights. For anybody new, please, these ones here, be very, very careful. Okay, non-farm payroll, 12.30, midnight, Friday night. Okay, Thursday's also a very big uh, block for sterling traders as we have the Bank of England, the official vote, the monetary policy and the speech as well. Yen, tomorrow, they can always surprise us with their monetary policy statements. Okay, and uh, other than that, they're the, they're the major highlights. Any Kiwi traders, we have employment change numbers can can give us a little bit of a, a jolt. The Aussies are a little bit more on the quiet side. The Aussie will be driven this week primarily by the US, uh, not by not from itself. Okay. 
Any final questions before we wrap up on this extremely, extremely Sydney hot day today? No? We're all good? Fantastic. Then I will see you on Thursday and I will be announcing the next trading challenge which will be very, very shortly. So keep an eye and an ear out for that. And um, so we look forward to getting stuck into that. Other than that, hope you all have a fantastic trading week. Keep watching the daily call every morning and I will see you soon. Bye for now.